What's that crazy guy in Chicago with his inside days? One, uh, two. What is that guy's name? I don't know. He runs like those marathons that last like a week. Hey guys, JC Peretz here, founder of allstarcharts.com, and I am joined once again by my esteemed colleague, Mr. Sean McLaughlin. Ooh, I think the only people that call me Mr. are precisely nobody, but thank you. Mr. Chicago Sean does not live in Chicago, is not from Chicago, but likes to go by Chicago Sean, which we are cool with. You you were you had a blog, right? Wasn't it Chicago Sean Blogspot? Uh, ChicagoShawn.com was the website. The blog spot was uh, something else. Early days. I've been reading you since before we were friends, like way back in the day. I can uh, say the same hilarious. about you. Hilarious. So <laughs> I like when we collaborate uh, in options uh, and equities, uh, Sean, when we have our meetings on Wednesday mornings and, you know, we talk through different trades and I throw out stuff and you're like, nah, or like, you know, sometimes we like stuff and like, there's just not a liquid options market. Or maybe implied volatility is not worth the trade. Like, I'll throw out, like, my perfect scenarios. Like, hey, Sean, how's the implied vol? What was I looking to sell implied volatility on? And there was just no juice. Dell. Dell, that's right. I'm like, how's the juice in Dell? You know, this thing's a mess. You know, let's sell some premium. You're like, nah, there's nothing there. It's like, all right. Well, then the other trade you had, I mean, I loved the other trade idea you had, that Formula One racing. I mean, that was a great setup, yeah. but we looked into the options and you could literally drive a Formula One racing car through the bid-ask spread of all those options. So, right, couldn't trade it. So, you know, I, I try to think of my perfect scenario. Like, I look at the chart, I, look, I, know, I understand what's going on in the market, and I'm like, in my perfect world, this the math in this trade would work in my favor. And then you, do -do 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 -do, and you're like, nope, nope. And then sometimes you're like, no, right, right, right. And in this case, like you took it a, a step further. I'm like, you know, we're talking about like some of these junky stuff, like, you know, a lot of short squeezes and a lot of mean reversions in some of the beat up areas and, you know, look no further than a Chinese tech scam internet, you know, who the hell knows what's going on here. Um, not our problem. If we can make money here and then it goes to zero, great. Like, that's fine. That's so, funny that you say that because on? I love it when people give us give us a hard time about oh, why would you want to get into that stock? They, their company does this. Their CEO said that. And we're like, who cares? It's just an yeah. instrument. It's just letters on a screen. It yeah. has prices associated with it. That's all we care about. That's it. That's exactly right. So we're looking at this towel. Uh, China in general has been hot. You know, the, these groups of stocks have been hot. The risk is very well defined, which I know you really like. And obviously, I really like here at 675 sort of completes that base. This is that kickback, that check back, the retest, if you will, of that breakout level. If it is, and if it's not, that's fine too. But if it is, uh, then there's a lot of upside potential. Uh, reminds me a lot, by the way, of Netflix. Remember this trade in Netflix? Right? You see how it's like a gap down and this creates an island, right? They call it an island reversal, right? Because it essentially creates an island of prices. What ends up happening is that prices sort of levitate up to those levels. At this point, uh, Netflix has exceeded those levels and is now up you know, 370, but it filled that massive gap, sort of like elevated, regardless of any stock market volatility or what was happening in the rest of the market. This was kind of trading in a world of its own uh, and did really well for us in the fourth quarter. This reminds me a lot of that. You have a very similar gap down and we could sort of fill that. And that's at 17 and a half and the stock's under seven. So that's, and then, and by the way, when we were talking about being bullish of Netflix, it seemed like a lofty target in something like Netflix. And as it turns out, that wasn't lofty at all. It, it got there very quickly, in fact. And I think this could be a similar situation. So I'm like, these things are junky as hell. We've got a correction. Volatility might be high here. Is it, Sean? As it turns out, it was. So it's worth selling the puts and then getting wild and crazy and buying those out of the money calls. Well, let but me, that, let me buy the out of the money calls. Why don't you walk through uh, the thought process of why we're, why you're, Doing a little uh, two for one there. Well, let me correct you on one point there. Uh, the volatility is not high in this, but we made up for that by selling puts that are pretty close to at the money, which is not something we normally do. But because we love this level here, this $6 level as a very clear and nearby risk management level, we're comfortable selling uh, the $6 puts. Uh, and, you know, I'll say I'll add one more thing to what you said about we have this level of risk $6 ish, right? We also have zero. We're not far from zero here, JC. We can't go much further from there. Not that we expect that to happen. And yes, 
I know all you crude oil traders are going to talk to me about things going negative. A stock cannot go negative. I'm 99.9% sure on that, that a stock can't go below zero. (laughs) But anyway, so we looked into this trade and um, JC's like, let's be aggressive. And Straz was like, let's be aggressive. We're going to be aggressive here. So I was like, all right, let's be aggressive. And you liked selling the puts uh, at the the $6 strike, which I totally agree with, by the way. We looked into the May options. Uh, We were able to get about 70, I'm ballparking here, but we were able to get about 75 cents uh, to sell those puts. And normally when we do a risk reversal trade, we would sell a put and use those proceeds to buy an out of the money call. They wash out, it works out to be a kind of a net zero cost or close to it. That's the way we like to do it. But in this case, we were more aggressive. We went f- uh, further out of the money calls. We bought the 10 strike calls also in May. And those were only trading for about half of the price of the puts. So we did a, a good uh, little uh, two for one there or two, two to one. We bought two calls for every put that we sold, uh, which is not something we normally do. Um, but this is a trade that if that six level holds and if this thing shoots back up and, and wants to really test that gap, this could be a big, big winner for us. I'm not saying it's going to be. I'm certainly not making that prediction, but we're in a position to create our own luck here, JC. And if we do, it, it could be a big one. You know, one of the things we talked about, and I think it's important to reiterate here, is that we put on a lot of different kinds of trades. Some are higher probability trades where the chances of success are going to be very high, but we're not going to make all that amount of money, right? It's right. just, you know, extra income, collect some cash. Um, you know, how many times did we do that selling puts in Berkshire Hathaway last year? Right. Like that was kind of like my go to four times at least. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. And, you know, as a baseball player, when you, when you get that fat pitch, you know, you got men on second and third, you know, hitting out of the park is really going to help your team out. This is sort of one of those situations. Like we're taking a big daddy hack. Like this is like, let's go. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. The risk is very well defined, which is awesome because you're able to take a big daddy hack and not take on, you know, as much risk uh, uh, as you might in other trades because the risk is so well defined. Right. We, we, right. Well, we break I down, mean, we're out. yeah, if, if we see any close below six dollars a share, that's our signal to get out because we are holding naked puts. So we don't want to let those like we don't want to sit and hope and pray that things are going to come back for us. No, no, no. That's never the situation to do that when you're holding naked short anything, really. Uh, so any any close below six, regardless of how we still feel about the trade, we're going to close it down. We could always get back in later with a different structure. Uh, but below six, we're out. No questions asked. Yeah. And as far as taking profits goes, right, why don't we why don't we walk through? Let's just say let's just say we get this right. Right. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. Who knows? Let's just say we get this right. What does it look like from a profit-taking standpoint? So this one is not so cut and dried. It's not if X happens, you do Y. Like it's not, there's not a number that we have in mind here for operating. It's going to take a little bit of monitoring. And, and what that what I mean by that is I've got two times as many calls as I do puts, right? So at any time, I'm going to be watching the value of those calls. If I could sell half of my calls or you know, a third of my calls and those proceeds will completely close all of my short puts, leaving me with the remainder of my calls at zero cost or maybe even a small credit. I'm going to do so, JC. So for example, if the calls, like I said earlier, we bought the calls, we paid about 35 cents for them. If they trade up just to 50 cents and at the same time, the puts are now trading at probably around 45 cents, I'm guessing, depending on the timing, of course, well, I could I could sell half of my calls right there for 50 cents, which it, which would fully pay for buying all of the puts that I have, and then I'm left with a half call position totally free. I've got no what risk. What you mean in the by table. it depends, you know, the price of the calls and the price of the puts, it, it needs to match up. And depending right. on how long it takes from now, those numbers will be different. Like we might find a situation JC where you know, there's some good news or something happens and TAL, TAL gaps higher one day and it opens it like say nine bucks a share. And we might find that our calls are now trading at a dollar a piece and our puts can be closed for 10 cents a piece. At that point, maybe we just buy 
or maybe we sell, you know, a tenth of our calls and that tenth of our calls pays right. for closing all the puts. And now we got an even bigger call position totally for free. Yeah. So it kind of depends on where we're able to get out, but we'll be, we'll be monitoring it closely. And here's that trade. So these are the Mays, 10 calls, two of those for every one put that we're selling the six puts out in May. Um, and I, I really like this trade a lot. At any point, it breaks below six. All bets are off. We're wrong. We move on to the next one. But this Netflix, you know, this Netflix trade worked out really well. And man, it reminds me a lot of it. <laughs> you know, uh, we were talking about it. I had it in my head. And like right before we started recording, I was like, you know what? I'm going to grab that Netflix chart. Where can I find that Netflix chart? I found it real quick. Uh, but this is this is what we were looking at back then on that breakout. The same thing. Yep. All right, buddy. Well, I, I like this trade. Thanks. Hey, you get the credit for bringing this one to the table. This was your idea. This is Bully definitely a Straza. It's a Straza stock. So we'll give him the credit on the stock. Uh, I, you know, you know me, I like my risk reversals like the best of them. If you're going to take a big daddy hack, there's that's your trade. Right. All right. Well, look, if we make money in this trade, I'll take the credit. If we lose, it's all on you. All right. Done. Deal. All right, guys. I'm JC Perez. This is Sean McLaughlin. And we'll see you next week.